those who can do. Those who can't talk about those who can. Now, can you or can you not? Are you just one that sits on the sideline to talk about other people or can you step up? Well, good morning, good people. Mark Holmes here. And as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day. Um, you know, I love doing YouTube, okay? This is something that I never in my wildest dreams would imagine that I would be talking in front of people. Just never. Anybody who knew me from high school knows that I was very, very shy, did not, not that outgoing, even though I played football, ran track and all that stuff. Just wasn't that guy. Couldn't do speeches in school and stuff. But am very, very blessed to be here. And, you know, I end up doing my fireside chat every night and remind people about how precious life is and how short time is and not to waste your time. And then this morning, I get a call from Game Time Brian. Shout out to Game Time Brian. Brian has been uh, putting in the work. In fact, I look at how far he's come in the year since we went to the pro football hall of fame a year ago and he was just at that point just like you know if i can just get to 300 subscribers well he's over 20,000 and continuing to grow and becoming another one of the cowboys mafia voices out there and i'm very very proud of him like like he's one of my kids um he called me this morning and let me know that um you, you guys may have remembered uh, some years back we went down to uh, Dallas to help out Stuart Morrison's mother. We ended up rebuilding her house. One of uh, Stuart's dying wishes was take care of mama and make sure that she's going to be okay. One of the bravest people I've ever met. Talking to him the night before he passed, he came on our live stream and it was beautiful I, I hope i hope in some ways that i get a chance to say goodbye to you guys um because that is the way i definitely i want a final message um one of the people so many people that have come together you know like randy sites who was in a car accident about two months ago and is learning how to walk again and he's gonna be okay but he's got a year long recovery coming um when he woke up that morning, he didn't know that he was going to have a life-altering car accident. Nobody expects these things to happen. Um, game time let me know that there was a, a follower of ours, Eric. Eric dropped everything that he was doing in his life, and he came and helped us at Stewart's house. All of the debris from where we demoed the bathroom and changing cabinets and light fixtures and all that stuff. We had all this debris in the back of the house. He came through with his truck. He, you know, with, with the help of others, loaded up his truck and hauled away all the debris. Just gave, gave and pitched in. And this is what, to me, America is about. Um, and this guy, you know, strong young man found out this morning that he's passed away and that's where you realize that time is precious so about an hour or so ago it was announced that michael irvin has some some really tragic news um michael irvin who will be at the autograph signing show or supposed to be i'm assuming he'll still be there uh this weekend um who is 58 years old him and his wife exact same age that I am, 58, um, revealed that his wife has the onset of all, all heim, all, Alzheimer's. I hope I pronounced it right. My wife knows that I can't seem to get the Z in there. Um, early onset of Alzheimer's, Alz, Alzheimer's disease. Um, he ended up talking with Clarence Hill Jr. about it, um, that he's suffering from disease for five or six years now and requires 24-hour care and that they have a live-in caretaker. And this is a quote from Michael. 
If anyone has earned the right to stay in her house, my wife has, Irvin said in a text to the, tele to the Star Telegram. That I shall honor, no matter what it takes. Mike and Michael and Sandy began dating when they played college when he played college football at Miami, and got married in 1990. They just uh, after Michael's second year in the NFL, they will celebrate their 34th anniversary this month. Um, according to the Alzheimer's Association, younger onset of Alzheimer's is much less common. But the disease, the disease does strike many people in the early 50s and even in the early 40s. So, thoughts and prayers for Michael Irvin and his family. Um, you know, it's, this, is, this is tragic. You know, I mean, you, you, you understand when you get in your 70s, 80s, and 90s, you understand something like that, dealing with something like that. But 58, you know, and, and knowing that Larry Allen, who was just 52, just passing away, it's just not fair. It's just not fair. Um, Michael Irvin, man, it, this is kind of crazy because um, <laughs> I met Michael Irvin. This is crazy. When just, just uh, the, uh, sitting here running, making my coffee this morning, and it's kind of crazy because it seems like every time I've seen Michael Irvin, there's something major going on in his life. The first time, and and I got a picture of it, and I got him to actually autograph it many many years later. I met Michael Irvin at Detroit, and to tell you how long ago, this was at the NFL Commissioner's Party. Roger Goodell becoming, from Paul Tagliabue, the NFL commissioner. This was incredible because they had all of the Super Bowl MVPs that were still alive there. I'm literally there and I'm looking at, you know, Ken Stabler and John Riggins and, you know, all of these, you know, Joe Montana. They're everywhere and stuff. And that night... That night, about an hour before the party started, they announced the Hall of Famers. And that was when he found out he was not going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. And I remember because I'm literally like a kid with my head on a swivel, just like in a candy store, seeing all of these incredible football players. And there's Michael Irving standing over by the food buffets and the food. Oh, my God, the food. And he's standing there by himself because nobody knew what to say to him. And me being the, you know, Joe the fan, thinking I'll never get a chance to see Michael Irvin again, I went over and had a conversation with him. We talked for about 10 minutes or so. And I asked him, I said, would you mind if I got a picture with you? He said, sure, no problem. And so it was, it was cool. So that was the first time I met him. You might remember about six years ago, there was a, a throat cancer scare. He's had his family, I think his father had cancer. And they found out the day of the autograph signing that he was cancer free. Boom. I saw him there. Last year, last year, we were, we saw him. Damn Gina was with us and everything. Um, this was after the whole Marriott incident um, had happened. And, you know, he was in the process of trying to get his reputation and his career back online. Boom. We see him there. And I gave him. <laughs> I did one of these for Michael Irvin. I got it autographed. Um, this was not autographed. This was one that actually messed up because. It, the machine stopped and started, so there's a line that's right there. But I gave this to him, and I said to him, I said, one of the bravest people that I've ever seen had these words of encouragement. Look up, get up, and don't ever give up. And I gave him one of these that we made. And now, this weekend, he's supposed to be at the 
autograph signing show in Chantilly. And now we find out about his wife. Um, prayers, thoughts, it's not enough. But I know Michael Irvin. Look up, stand up, and don't ever give up. I'm Mark Holmes, and football transcends so many things. So many things. Have a nice day. Peace.